Information online about raw feeding can seem very convoluted and overwhelming. If you're wanting to switch your pet to raw food or already feed your pet raw and just want a few well-rounded raw feeding tips, look no further. In this video, I'm gonna go over my top 10 do's and don'ts of raw feeding. Number one, do include raw meaty bones, muscle meats, and secreting organs. The base of a raw diet is going to be muscle meats, raw meaty bone, and secreting organ meat. Commonly, the ratios of these parts are roughly 80% muscle meat, 10% raw meaty bone, 5% liver, and 5% other secreting organ. This ratio can change depending on your pet and their overall specific needs, but this is a good base to start out with. For cats, the ratios are altered a bit at about 84% muscle meat and 6% raw meaty bone, as they often do better with less bone and more muscle meat. These guidelines stem loosely from ratios of a prey animal's body. Number two, don't rush your pet when introducing new foods. If you introduce too many food items at once or you switch your adult from kibble to raw too quickly, your pet may end up having some GI issues. I've had many pet owners message me wondering why their pet is having diarrhea when switching to raw. Many times it turns out to be caused by either a rapid transition or too many foods introduced at once. You may want your pet on a raw diet as soon as possible, but rushing in can set you all the way back to the beginning. Give your pet's body some time to adjust. Number three, do start out with one animal protein at the beginning. No matter the age, if you wanna start your pet on a raw diet, it's best to begin with a single animal protein, often a white meat protein like chicken or turkey, which is easier on the system during the transition process. This is so you can pinpoint a food sensitivity or allergy if there is one. You could also start with a single protein commercial grind to make things easier, since it's not always easy finding muscle meat, meaty bones, liver, and a second secreting organ from one single animal. After a week or so, you can add in a second protein and so on after concluding that there were no reactions. Number four, don't forget the second secreting organ. For the most part, new raw feeders have no problem finding and feeding liver, but many times forget or are unaware that they need to provide a second secreting organ as well. Remember, we are striving to mimic a prey animal's body. Their body is made up of many secreting organs, but if we can at least provide a second one on top of their liver, this greatly adds to the nutrient profile of the meal. I will link a video where I go over what counts as a secreting organ in the description. Number five, do feed off cuts. What I mean by this is don't just feed the meat that you can easily find, like pork loin and chicken breast, but feed parts that are available at ethnic markets like heart, gizzard, trachea, tongue, and lungs. These greatly add to the nutrient profile of your pet's meals and also bring more variety for their palate. Number six, don't feed weight-bearing bones. There are many safe and beneficial raw meaty bones to feed, but there are a handful that can be dangerous. In general, you should feed your pet size appropriate bones that will be easy for them to fit in their mouth and crunch down on. These are usually poultry, rabbit, rodent, and small lamb and pork bones. Larger bones from beef, bison, and some pork, goat, lamb, and turkey may cause teeth fractures because of how dense they are. And additionally, it may be a choking hazard. I will link a video that goes over raw meaty bones more in the description. Number seven, do aim to understand balancing your pet's meal. Pet food companies follow nutrient guidelines to make sure that they meet each nutrient requirement that your pet needs. Even when making a homemade diet, essential nutrients will still need to be met. While pet food companies use synthetic nutrients to hit these numbers easily, you can meet these nutrient requirements through species-appropriate fresh foods. A diet of raw meat, bones, and organs unfortunately isn't enough to meet all nutritional needs. So feeding items like oily fish, shellfish, egg, kelp, and depending on the species, nuts, seeds, and leafy greens can help meet nutritional needs. I will link a few videos where I go over this in more detail in the description. Number eight, don't starve your pet. For healthy adult dogs, trying the tough love method can be helpful in some cases. This is essentially where you would withhold your dog's old food and replace it with raw food and wait for them to be hungry enough to eat it. However, I wouldn't recommend doing this if you haven't tried other methods first. 
When it comes to cats and ferrets, this method can actually be harmful. Prolonged fasting in cats can cause hepatic lipidosis, and with ferrets can cause blood glucose levels to drop significantly. If they're not taking to raw food right away, it needs to be incorporated very slowly, and their current diet should not be removed until they're willingly eating a raw meal. Number nine, do monitor their stool. During the beginning of the transition, loose stool is normal. Loose stool means still having somewhat of a form to it, while diarrhea is more liquidy. If your pet is having diarrhea for more than 48 hours or seems lethargic, this will need to be addressed. Diarrhea may indicate a protein intolerance, too much fat, or you're simply giving too much too quickly. If the stool is too firm and crumbly, this is indicating that you're feeding too much bone and you should recalculate the bone percentage in the meal. Number 10, don't stress. Okay, that may be easier said than done, but just remember that I was in the same spot you were at one point. Your pet doesn't need to be on a fully raw diet by the weekend. What you need to do as their owner is take all the time that you need to research and actually understand what you're learning when it comes to the raw diet. Review different sources, get advice from other raw feeders, compare information, ask questions, and seek guidance from a certified nutritionist if you're overwhelmed. Take your time and don't stress. There are many things that I wish that I knew when I first started feeding raw. Watch this video so you don't make the same mistakes I did.